All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual set to compete at Bellator 290, and that goes down on February 4th. It is a welterweight fight with Brennan Ward and Sabah Homasi getting out there into the cage to test skills, and happy to be talking to Sabah today. How is everything going today, man? It's going great, man. Just training, doing that typical stuff. And just being that we're kind of early in 2023 here, I'm curious to, I guess, get the general thoughts on last year because it seemed like he had a good 2022 and as far as getting you know back-to-back first round finishes going 2-0 and he got one submission one knockout like how would you assess your 2022 campaign overall uh performance i mean shit for the two minutes that i fought i thought I, it was pretty great you know um put the hard work in the gym and then you'll have outcomes like that so i'm happy with it I'm just upset that I only fought twice. You know, I'd like to fight more than two times a year. So hopefully this year will be different. I was going to say, just with this being like an early February kind of card, are you confident that you'll be able to at least get in three this year, just being that this is an earlier one? Or well, I had an early year last year, too. You know, I fought in January, and then I fought in June, and then nothing after that. So... So these are my best years. You know, I'm in my prime right now. This is the best I've ever felt. So I want to stay busy. I want to stay active. Um, and obviously fighting two times a year. That's not going to cut it anymore. Yeah, and like you said, the cage time too. Like it maybe be good to get in like, yeah, a little bit more of that. Just, I mean, your last fight being like, you know, 58 seconds. It's like you're not really getting much under you in that sense and also like you said not really you know competing as much like why do you think that is that you've you know only been able to compete two times last year like what do you think was going on there yeah i mean i fought you know three years in a row twice a year i don't i don't i don't understand what's going on i don't understand why but um i'll figure it out you know i i'm hoping i get three this year so we'll see we will see only time will tell you know, of course, I have to stay healthy and injury-free as well. You know, after my last fight, I broke my right hand, but that healed up, and I was trying to get on the Chicago card you guys had in November. I was trying to get on the uh, Connecticut card December 9th, um, and, you know, they told, they told me I wasn't fighting until next year, so maybe this will be different. Yeah, hopefully you're able to get out there and compete more and stuff like that but yeah it seems like you're always getting in great work like obviously American top team being like a primary space but it also seems like Boca boxing district is a place where you're getting in work are those like the main kind of spaces you're kind of honing the skills ahead of this one I'm I'm sorry I really uh I can't hear you very well Oh, sorry, I was just saying, like, it seems like American Top Team and Boca Boxing District is where you're mostly getting in work. Are those the primary gyms? Yeah, American Top Team, Coconut Creek. I train with uh, my boxing coach, Di Davis, at his facility at Boca Boxing. Um, I did my training conditioning out with uh, with Jeremy to prove he's out in, in Wellington. Um <clears throat> And that, that, that's where I'm primarily at. You know, that's primarily I'm at those gyms. Mainly American Top Team. That's, I, I mean, I'd say I spend most of my time there. I'm there every single day. And then uh, when I go to, you know, Bias Gym in Boca, <clears throat> I'll finish my uh, session at Top Team. And then later on in the day, I'll have a session with him. And that's the same with my strength condition. So American Top Team, I'm there every single day getting into work. Um, but then obviously I sharpen up. My hands with that, start finishing with my coach, Jeremy, and um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, and it seems like it's a great vibe at that gym. Like, obviously, like um, w- among one of the elite gyms, if not the best gym globally, but also it seems like you've got a like, good friendly rapport with a lot of people there, like Dustin Poirier and stuff like that. Like, how important is that combination of there being, obviously, the high-level you know, work had, but also just like the, I guess, friendly kind of supportive collective dynamic, I would think that would also add something to it. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you know, friendship isn't built overnight. You know, I've been there for a very long time. I've been there since 2008, you know, and all these guys that are in my corner. Um, obviously, Dustin came a down the road, and, you know, when he first came, um, 
I wouldn't say we trained much at all when he first came. It was just later down the road, and we started training together. But he built a bond with these guys. You know, they're um, I consider them family, so they're always there for me. I'm always there for them, and that's how it'll be. Yeah, for sure. Love to see the friendly, supportive dynamics, and like you said, very much part of what you've been doing from the start. But you know, the last fight was kind of an interesting one because it seemed like there was a bit more bad blood than we've normally seen from you. Like, it seemed like there was some trash talking. Like, obviously, there was the, you know, shove at the weigh-ins and stuff like that. It doesn't seem like there's that kind of dynamic heading into this one. Does the bad blood kind of dynamic or, like, getting a little spicier with it add a little something to the fight, just having that, like, banter and stuff like that beforehand? Or does it not really matter one way or the other, I suppose? Um, I don't... <clears throat> I don't think it matters, you know. I, I I don't like to go into fights with a hot head or fighting with anger because, you know, it's, in my opinion, I think that's the wrong thing to do. You need a clear mind. You can't fight with anger because if you fight with anger, you're going to end up making a mistake and, you know, your opponent could possibly capitalize on that. Um, but my last my last fight, I, I was, you know, obviously a little more pissed off because of what happened at Williams. And, you know, what happened at Williams stemmed from you know, what happened in the, in the uh, locker room. Like, in, <clears throat> I was in the blue, or I was in the red corner, and, um, you know, me and Johnny were just warming up, like, getting a sweat late at night in the blue corner, because Johnny was in the blue corner. And the blue corner locker room was completely empty, and it was hot. You know, the red one was cold. So we went into the hot room. I was like, yeah, whatever. If he comes in here, we'll just, I'll just be respectful, and we'll go to the red one. And he's like, all right. So when he came in, um, I was, you know, I was like, oh, I was like, sorry, I was like, if you need the room, I can go to my um, my locker room, the red corner locker room. And he just looked at me, gave me this dirty-ass look, and, you know, just fucking walked away. So I thought, I was like, okay, maybe he doesn't speak English. So I was just like, all right, whatever. But then he came back in to check his weight. <clears throat> me and Johnny were just obviously sitting there waiting for him to be done. And uh, and his coach just, like, kind of gave me a nod. Whoever he was with just gave me a nod. But then, um, you know, we continued on. At weigh-in, he spoke English to me and uh, head-butted me. And that, that's when, like, I kind of fucking lost it. I was like, this motherfucker speaks English. You know? Like, I'm sitting here being respectful and being nice. Like, yeah, I know I'm in your fucking locker room, but... Don't be a fucking dickhead. You know, we're going to fight regardless. I don't know why you got to have a fucking tough guy fucking act, but whatever. Well, yeah, with all the context you outlined there, I mean, for sure that's going to be, like, an understandable reaction, for sure. This one doesn't really, you know, feel like one that has that dynamic, too, though. Like, I feel like both of you are regarded as, like, some of the more, like, proven action fighters in, you know, Bellator history, and also very specifically under the welterweight division too as well so i feel like there's not going to really be that dynamic in this one so much like i feel like both of you guys kind of you know know what's going to be in this fight and know what you're going to bring to the table and yeah just really put on that like action heavy kind of fan-friendly fight i would think yeah absolutely i mean this is gonna ask for a better matchup you know two guys who live by the sword die by the sword you know we're going to come in and put on a performance um and it's going to be a great fight, you know, for people to watch, fans, even the promotion, the staff of the promotion, they're going to enjoy it. You know, everyone's going to enjoy it. What's not to love about a matchup like that? <laughs> yeah, and he kind of has like a similar level of momentum coming into this. And as far as he also had back-to-back finishes in his 2022 campaign. And based on the way you're kind of talking about Brennan Ward, like this seems like someone you were already aware of when the bout announcement came your way? Like, what was the, I guess, temperament when the bout offer came your way? Like, was it like, oh, yeah, we're going to have, like, fight of the night for sure? Because I feel like if that bout offer came my way and I was in your position, I'd be like, oh, yeah, probably going to get some extra coin for this. Maybe, like, uh, you know, fight of the year consideration, something of that ilk. Well, honestly, I knew the fight was going to happen. Um, I kind of lost hope because Kogan told me, that it wasn't going to happen. I was like, what the fuck? Um, you know, I was like, listen, a lot of, a couple of his fans, his fan was his dick riders were coming onto my page, tagging uh, Brennan Ward, saying fight Brennan Ward, you're ducking Brennan, like all this fucking boy. Like, you know, it's like, look, 
I don't fucking duck nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you want to get into a fist fight, we can do it outside. Doesn't, it doesn't fucking matter to me. But so I'm like, man, what the fuck is going on here? And the next, you know, people were tagging me on his shit, on his page. So then after the fight in in um, Connecticut in June, I'm sitting in the stands, which I shouldn't have been because I got kicked out of the arena. And um, fucking, I see Brendan Ward walk by. He looks at me, gives me a nod. I look back, I give him a nod back, and I fucking run up to him. I was like, yo, are we going to make this fight happen or what? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. Like, he was super cool about it. And I was like, all right, let's fucking do the damn thing. And, um, you know, we were actually both planning to fight each other in fucking December. December 9th in Connecticut. Um, and, and that didn't happen. So I I made a video because she's been online fucking making videos and talking whatever and saying. I made a video and I sent it to my manager. I was like, can I post this? And he's like, hold on, let me ask for permission. And he got the green light and I went ahead and posted it. Um, pretty much just saying that, you know, Brennan and I agreed to fight each other a while ago and hopefully Bellator makes the fight happen. And then shortly after that, they made the fight happen. Yeah, I didn't know there was that backstory to it. I'm kind of curious, like, why you weren't supposed to be in the arena after Bellator 282 like you were saying you weren't technically supposed to be there like why was that well the commission you know Mike Hogan gave me approval it was uh, you know I still had like three other teammates fighting on the card and we were all in the same locker room and after my interview you know I got approval from Hogan Mike's like that's fine stay in the locker room. I was like, all right, cool. So after the fight, I went to the locker room to like grab your stuff um, because you have to head out afterwards. I was like, I, I really got the commission that was in the room. Super cool. And I was like, I really got approval from Mike Hogan. He said, I could stay in the locker room. I'm going to go uh, do my interviews and I'll be right back. So I headed over to do the media interviews afterwards and um, I was walking back. First lady stops me and says, uh, you can't be here. You got to leave. I was like, I just, I got approval from Mike Hogan. She said it was okay. Uh, she's like, no. I was like, well, you should probably touch base with someone so you guys are all on the same page because I keep getting asked the same question. And if you know the next lady came, she's like, you can't be here. You got to leave. I was like, and then I started getting irritated. I was like, no, I don't. I just told you guys, I'm like, I got approval to be back here. So I'm not fucking leaving. So I went back to the, she kept on talking, I just ignored her, I went back to the dressing room. And the next, you know, fucking police came, and more commission people came, and all this shit, and they're like, uh, I was like, listen, dude, I was like, look at the text message between me and Conan. That it was okay for me to stay, and all this stuff. And uh, the guy, the gentleman that I was talking to was super cool about it, he's like, I sit tight. Um, and we had a couple phone calls, and I let you know if you're able to stay in the locker room or not. And I was like, all right, no worries. Comes back, like, 15, 20 minutes later, and he's like, dude, I'm sorry, you gotta go. I was like, right, no worries. She's like, uh, you're actually getting kicked out of the whole building. You can't come back in here to watch the fight either. I'm like, fucking great. So I went uh, I went out, my manager and I, and um, a couple other people went to go grab some pizza. We ate pizza and Johnny's fight. You know, he's about to fucking walk out for a fight. So I'm like, I'm going back in. I don't give a shit. So <laughs> I fucking went back into the arena and sat in my seat and fucking just kept quiet to watch the whole fight. <laughs> And then left. It's going to be a similar dynamic for this card, too, and as far as you're going to want to stay back and corner some people after, because, I mean, Johnny is obviously, you know, on this card as well. So hopefully a smoother process this time, or what are we thinking about all that? Is, are you going to handle this any differently? Or? I'm going to have to, uh, you know, it's me, Johnny, and Mike Lombardo. Mike Lombardo fights earlier in the night. Uh, so I'll be watching that uh, in the dressing room. And uh, Johnny, he's, he's right after me. So I'm going to quickly, as quick as possible, man, hopefully get out of the cage, do my interviews, and and, uh, and then, you know, quickly rush the shower and get dressed. And I won't even shower. I, I just want to, I just need to watch Johnny's fight, support him, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I don't want to take up too much of your time. I imagine you have some other 
interviews to do too but it's been great getting to talk to you sabah i guess i'm curious if there's anything you might want to add though as like a parting kind of final thought as we're wrapping things up here though no nothing man besides i'm just looking forward to getting into a goddamn chess fight you know this is what i enjoy doing and uh i'm excited to put on another spectacular performance and come out with my hand raised yeah well i think anyone who's remotely familiar about yourself and also Brennan Ward, I think they can expect one of the better fights, if not the very best fight of the calendar year, and I'll put that out there. And yeah, Bellator 290, very stacked card on February 4th, and this bout, you know, certainly one I'm very much excited for. So thanks for making time to talk before the fight, and just you have a good rest of your day too, Sabah. No problem, man. No problem at all. Thanks for having me, and uh, see you soon.